Did you know that more than 47% of Indians may be deficient in vitamin B12? That's almost every second person you know. It may be your neighbor, a family member, or maybe even you. Vitamin B12 deficiency is not something new in India. It is extremely common and increasing day by day. However, what's concerning is that many people have started taking these supplements without checking their levels or consulting a doctor. Some may hear it from friends, others read something about it online, and many think it's just a multivitamin, so it must be safe. But the truth is not that simple. Taking B12 when you don't need it might seem harmless, but in some cases it would be unnecessary, wasteful or even harmful in the long run. So in this video, we will talk about everything you must know before taking vitamin B12 supplements. The signs of deficiency, who needs it and who doesn't, and the most important part, how to take it the right way. So let's get started. What exactly is vitamin B12 and why is it important? Well, vitamin B12, also known as cobalamin, it's a water-soluble vitamin that your body needs for many critical functions. It is helpful in making healthy red blood cells, keeps your nervous system strong, supports DNA synthesis and plays an important role in your brain function and energy production also. So without enough B12, your body starts to struggle. You might feel tired, weak, irritable or even forgetful. Some people even find tingling in their hands and feet or find it hard to balance while walking. And here's the interesting part. Your body does not make vitamin B12. You have to get it from your diet or supplements. And this is where the problem starts. Vitamin B12 is mainly found in animal products. Apart from non-vegetarian foods, it is also found in dairy products like milk, cheese, yogurt or dahi. But people who follow a strict vegetarian or a vegan diet or a vegan diet naturally consume less of it. So even if you do not eat non-vegetarian food, your stomach and intestines must be able to absorb it properly. That means even vegetarians or non-vegetarians can be deficient if their body does not absorb B12 properly. Now coming to the second part of this video is about what symptoms can arise due to vitamin B12 deficiency and why it sometimes often gets missed. One of the earliest and most common symptom is fatigue. You may feel tired even after you have rested well at night. Some people experience numbness or tingling, especially in the hands or feet. This happens because B12 is essential for your nerve health and B12 deficiency does lead to a lot of problems in your nerves. Some may feel even dizzy when they are standing up. They may experience blurred vision or sometimes you may feel that your legs are not strong enough to walk properly. These are very vague symptoms. Apart from these, other symptoms may be recurrent mouth ulcers, a burning tongue, even mood swings and poor memory are symptoms that vitamin B12 deficiency can cause. And what makes B12 deficiency tricky is that these symptoms appear very slowly and are often mistaken for other problems, maybe stress, thyroid, or even just aging. In severe cases, untreated B12 deficiency can cause permanent nerve damage or even affect your brain function. And that's why early identification and proper treatment are crucial. Now the big question is, why are so many Indians deficient in B12? And let us understand the reasons behind the high rate of deficiency of B12 in India. Well, the number one is diet. A large percentage of our Indians, including myself, are vegetarians. And as we discussed, Plant-based foods do not contain enough amount of natural B12. Dairy products will contain small amount, but sometimes they may not be enough if you consume less of dairy. Number two is gut-related absorption issues. Your stomach needs to produce enough acid and another substance called as intrinsic factor to absorb 
B12 from food. But if you have acidity, you're taking antacids, or you are using proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole for a long time, this process can get affected. The number three factor is age. As you grow older, your body produces less acid and less of intrinsic factor. So even if you're eating the right foods, you may not be absorbing B12 properly. Number four factor is medications. Yes, medications like metformin, which is very commonly used for people who have diabetes, or even long-term use of antacids can interfere with this vitamin B12 absorption. Number five is alcohol consumption. Yes, alcohol can cause problems because it damages the stomach lining and interferes with the absorption. And finally, remember that the ultimate absorption of B12 happens in the last part of the small intestine called as the ileum. And if there are certain health conditions like Crohn's disease, inflammatory bowel disease, celiac disease, or someone who's undergone a gastric bypass surgery, then they will have a less ability to absorb B12. Now let's address the big question. Should you start taking B12 supplements just like that? The clear answer is no. Not everyone needs supplements and certainly not in high doses because if you see that the normal requirement of B12 is very less as compared to the dose of medicines. And when you take B12 when your levels are normal, it is usually not harmful because it's a water soluble one and excess amounts will get excreted through urine. But there's a problem with taking it blindly. Firstly, it might mask a serious issue. So if you have a gut absorption problem, then just taking a pill will not fix the main problem or the root cause. Secondly, some people take B12 as if it's a cure everything for fatigue. So they keep taking it while ignoring other possible causes, which could be iron deficiency, thyroid issues, lifestyle issues, insulin resistance, sleep disorders. There are many causes of fatigue. B12 is just one of them. Before starting B12, a good serum blood test level of B12 will tell you whether you really need supplementation. If needed, your doctor may also check the MMA or homocysteine levels to confirm the same. Now let's talk about what types of vitamin B12 you will find in supplements and injections. There are essentially four different varieties or types of vitamin B12 available. And these four are cyanocobalamine, methylcobalamin, hydroxycobalamin, and adenosylcobalamin. Of all these four, cyanocobalamin is the synthetic form and is most commonly available in supplements and fortified foods. It is stable, affordable, and works well for most people. Whereas the most active form found naturally is methylcobalamin, that is found in food as well as supplements. And it is also found in many of the medications that we use. So it is better absorbed by people who have milk absorption issues as well. The third one, hydroxy cobalamin is usually given as an injection because it has a longer storage time in the body. The last one, adenosyl cobalamin, is another natural form, but it is hardly ever used today. In India, most of the over-the-counter tablets and injections use methylcobalamin. Injections are especially preferred for severe cases when the patient has neurologic symptoms or poor gut absorption as well. And you may also find sublingual tablets. Sublingual means they dissolve under the tongue, allowing direct absorption into the bloodstream. Another innovative way of taking B12 is by nasal spray. There are a few companies which manufacture a nasal spray of vitamin B12. That is also helpful for people who have digestive or absorption problems. Now coming to the part, how much vitamin B12 do you really need? And I'll tell you a very simple guide. An average adult needs just about 2.4 micrograms per day. Yes, that's the small amount that we normally need. However, in pregnancy, women may need a little more. And most people can get this through their food and hence no major supplements would be required regularly. But if you see that most of the supplement tablets, they come in 500, 1000 or even 1500 micrograms. That may sound so high, but the body only absorbs a small portion. So don't panic if your doctor prescribes you a high dose tablet or injection. It's common, especially in the start of therapy or treatment to give larger doses to 
quickly replenish your stores. It is important when you have a deficiency which is proven. And once your levels would improve, the dose is either reduced or stopped. And long-term overdose is rare. But in few cases, high doses given for excess periods may give rise to severe itching or allergic reactions. So always take vitamin B12 for the right reason, in the right dose and under medical advice. When it comes to the dosage schedule that is used by doctors, many doctors have different types of schedules that they follow. But the two most common ones are, one is for the sublingual tablets, either 500 to 1000 micrograms per day for one month is sufficient for mild deficiency. And coming to injections, 1000 micrograms once a day for one week and then 1000 micrograms once a month thereafter. This is especially suitable for people who have gut absorption or severe deficiency. Now, who should be extra careful? So here's a quick checklist of people who should keep a close watch on their B12 levels. Vegetarians and those who follow a vegan diet, people above the age of 50 years, patients who have diabetes and are on metformin medicines, people with long-term acidity problems or taking regular antacids, anyone with digestive disorders like inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease or even celiac disease, women who are pregnant or planning a pregnancy, those with neurologic symptoms like tingling, numbness or memory issue, remember B12 can be one of the reasons for that. People who have undergone weight loss or bariatric or gastric surgery. So if you fall into any of these groups, do speak to your doctor, get your levels checked once every 6 to 12 months. So to answer the question in short, should you take vitamin B12? Only in the right way. So test first, then treat. Don't fall into the trap of self-prescribing just because your friend said it worked for them. And do share this video with your friends and relatives who might benefit from this information.